So now let's look at a demonstration of the LEA approval process. So here's the CalPATS home screen. And as an LEA, I can see my certification status using the left navigation. And you can see all the snapshots for the year because we are now at the end of year. So we see fall one, fall two, end of year one, end of year two, end of year three, and end of year four. If it was just the fall one submission cycle, we would only see fall one. Then when fall two comes, you would only see fall one and fall two. And then at the end of the year, when all the end of years are available and are being processed, you can see all the snapshots for the entire year. To select a specific submission, I would just hover over the link. We can see that our LEA is listed, which the code is for which snapshot, fall one, fall two, end of year. Also, the entire name is written out here. The revision status, the submission create date, a certification status if there is one, Currently, all of my revisions have been uncertified. Who the last reviewer is. So you would see the code of the last person to look at the reports or the snapshot, the date and time that last review was made. So sometimes you'll see CSIS or CDE names listed, and that's because we'll look at your snapshot. Total errors and warnings, right? These are all the errors and warnings that you have, total fatal errors and warnings, right? And so you can see with end of year one, there are over 17,000 errors or warning. However, there's only 28 fatal errors. So these fatal errors require the most attention because they prevent you from certifying. Although there are a lot of warnings that you should review and check for the accuracy of your data, only 28 of those errors will prevent you from certifying. The number of how many warnings, and then the anomaly percentage. Currently in CalPADS, the anomaly percentage generates a fatal error for fall one. However, it is possible that in future submission cycles that the anomaly percentage will be added to all of the snapshots. Anomalies are discrepancies in student data. They impact the accuracy of data. They can impact graduation and dropout rates, your cohort. They prevent students, in some cases, from showing up for testing. Uh, so anomalies should be resolved, but the current CalPADS anomaly percentage is under two. So fall one here has a percentage over two it would trigger a CERT 40 and this uh, LEA could not certify. It's going to be decreased in future. So just be aware of that. Now, I want to select a snapshot. So I will click end of year two program participation. And the reason why we have selected end of year two is that end of year two does not require a SELPA approval. This is strictly the LEA. Fall two, end of year one and end of year two or LEA approval only. So the LEA will see on the certification detail screen a summary of the revision. If I want to check the revision into review, I can select this button here. I would just click it and it would set the status into review. See? Now you can see I have an in review uncertified revision. This snapshot has been frozen. I have 28 errors that I need to resolve, right? So we can look at our certification validations and any warnings if there were some. So all 28 of my errors are CERT uh, 004. A student has no ethnicity or race data. So I can elect to show those students. And they're listed here. 
and I can click SSID to look at the student's record in the CalPEDS ODS. I can identify my discrepancy and resolve it. Certification error or validations find discrepant data in the CalPEDS ODS. Not to be confused with IVRs or input validation errors, that is discrepant data within your submission and those records are rejected and not in CalPADS. Certification errors are errors triggering on data that's been posted to CalPADS. Now, all fatal errors, there's three pages of these errors, right? There's 10 listed on each page and the last page only has eight because I have 28. They would all need to be resolved prior to me being able to certify. Okay, I would also need to review the reports. So let's see how to review a report. You select the report you want to review. So you can see the report has rendered. We looked at our counts. We made an assessment. If I want to download, I have several different formats in which I can download the report. I can print the report. I can cycle through the report. I can find information in the report. So let's look for a school. You see it, it highlights the name. Um, sometimes if it's a student report, you look for a student. So you have a find. Now let's go back to the certification detail screen. Um, you have filter options in the report. If you want to look for a specific gender, you can. Then you would run the report. If you wanted to filter for a specific school, you can. And then click run the report. So you have different filter options. So we're back on the certification detail screen and we can see that the aggregate report has been reviewed. Now at this point, there would be a check box and a certification button available to me. That's not pictured here because I have 28 errors that need to be resolved. So what we can try to do is see if we can find a revision or an LEA that has no errors so that we can simulate certification for you all. So I'm going to change my account. I'm going to a state level account. That will give me access to all the LEAs so we can find one and look at a LEA that's ready to certify. Well, here we have an end of year one snapshot that has zero fatal errors. And so assuming that all the data had been submitted and the errors resolved and that there wasn't so many warnings, right? We have looked at the warnings and resolved them. And this is, I guess, a good time to look at some of these warnings and show you why they're important as well. So although uh, warnings do not prevent you from um, certifying, they can be key indicators of discrepant data. So the CERT 055 says that high school with no enrollment in CTE. So for uh, a high school, let's see, show. In this case, there's seven high schools. And this is end of year one course completion in CTE. One of the key components is career technical education. And for this district, there are seven high schools that have no CTE data and they are listed here. That's probably not likely, so I would, as the LEA, want to identify should these high schools not have any CTE data. Perhaps my ABC adult school doesn't have any CTE data, but maybe Cerritos High or Artesia High does, and that was something that I needed to make sure it gets populated in the CalPads, right? You know, the other warning was, no student course section data for primarily enrolled student. I have over 10,000 students with no course section data. That's probably something that requires my attention as well. I would probably have to submit those records. Maybe there's 
23, 34 students that transferred into my district and left without being there for an official grading, grading period and do not have a, a student course section completion records. But I doubt that 10,000 students. And so that's what I would look into. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration, however, uh, we're not going to review those errors. We would look to see how we would certify. So first, we'd want to review uh, our reports. Okay, so we have our aggregate counts. We can look at them. And then there's a shortcut, right? We'll go back. If you want to review all your reports at once, and CalPads is not busy. Now, CalPads is busy. This isn't going to work for you. But if you want to review several reports, you just render them in separate tabs. So then I reviewed one, right? I hover over this link. I right click. I can open in a new tab. Hover over this link, and I open in a new tab. Now I have to wait for them to render. They're going to run one after the other. So we'll just have to wait this one out. Okay, so uh, 3.14 CTE concentrators and completers. Right, I'm looking at my report. And then I have 3.17. And so when I refresh, I click F5. Now that we've refreshed, you can see that we've reviewed all of our reports, right? And here are all the supporting reports. And so as I'm looking at my aggregate counts, I can look at the student detail data or the course detail data here to confirm that these counts are accurate. So we've reviewed all our reports. Let's exit. Let's go back to certification status and then come back in. Okay, so now you can see that I am in the LEA level account again, ABC Unified, and I reviewed all my reports, all the aggregate reports have been reviewed, and there's a checkbox. By reviewing these reports, you're certifying, you're stipulating that the information therein is accurate, correct, and complete to the best of your knowledge. Once I click this check mark, I would have the ability to approve the snapshot. However, I'm not going to do that because we're actually in the production version of CalPads, and I don't want to preemptively put uh, this LEA in a bad position. Unfortunately, it's the first one in the alphabet. It's used a lot for demonstration purposes. However, certainly they are not in a position to where they were ready to certify. There's a lot of data that needs to be submitted upcoming. But that is how you would certify. You're going to review those validations, correct the fatal errors, review the warnings. After you reviewed your warnings and resolve the fatal errors, you review your aggregate reports. You ensure that those aggregate reports are accurate and complete by comparing data in your supporting reports to your SIS, your student information system, or if it's a different uh, snapshot, if it's into year four, you would compare that data to your SED system. You have a snapshot history. Now, why is this good? The snapshot history gives you a date and time. So when you're submitting files, you can look at your status time, not the submission time, but the status time. And any status time in your submission that has a revision complete status, you match it to the revision create date and time, right? And so you can identify if the data from a file is included in the snapshot you are looking at. And so if you're getting towards the end of uh, certification, the deadline's coming up and you're getting multiple snapshots and revisions in a day, and you're submitting files throughout the day, you wanna stay abreast of what data, what recent changes 
are part of a particular snapshot. And so you would use the snapshot history for that. Also, just as a, a note of advisement, as your LEA monitor, I can look at your errors and your snapshots. Snapshots tell me that you're working in cow pads and errors tell me how effectively you're working. So if they're not going down, I can tell that you're not that active. So several uses for the snapshot history down here. And so there's nothing to it. Like I said, uh, you know, that's all you need to know uh, as far as certifying data if you're an LEA. It doesn't matter the snapshot, the process is the same. Uh, once the data is submitted, you, re you resolve the fatal errors. In doing so, you review the warnings. After that, you want to verify the data is accurate on your aggregate reports. In doing so, you must review the supporting reports as well. Once all the reports have been reviewed, this check box can be checked where you are affirming that the data is complete and accurate, and then you're approving the status. After you approve a status, what happens? And so to show you that, that will be a different module, SELPA approval. 